Hello, my name is Ravel Gaither and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today on my channel, I'm gonna be bringing you guys along on a process of me making this shoulder bag. And it is a remake of a bag that I did not too long ago, but this bag is so beautiful. I love the colors on it and it, it just came out so good. And I rarely ever do remakes. And when I do, I try to change up the color or do something a little bit different from the original. And this one I almost didn't wanna do because I did not want to change the original essence of what I designed this bag to be, but it came out beautiful. And it's so crazy how when you you can remake the same thing and do it in a different color and you'll see something completely different it'll remind you of something it'll bring out something different um you know within you so it's really cool i love it i'm gonna go ahead and show the bag and talk about it so let's do that so this is the bag that i make in this video and i mean look at this this bag and these colors are gorgeous like this is a completely show-stopping statement piece of a bag like it is beautiful literally from top to bottom and all the sides that it can be seen from like it's amazing so i made this bag using a 100 cotton denim and then i also used a waterproof canvas that i applique the pieces on for and look at the stitching for the applique it looks so good on this bag i love the thick stitches and i also love the different texture look from the waterproof canvas to the denim like it just looks so good i don't know if you can see on camera but the waterproof canvas kind of has like a sheen and the shine to it which looks amazing and i love it because this bag reminds me of like a river or like water and i talk about it a little later on in the video probably towards the end but i really love the meaning of this bag and what i kind of named it and the vibe that it's giving so super dope this is the bag that i make in this video so if you do want to stick around and watch me make this bag please do make sure you give this video a big thumbs up leave a comment down below let me know what you think make sure you also check out my patterns if you're interested in making your own bags i have one for a tote bag and then one for a wallet on my website make sure you check that out i have everything linked down below in the description box and let's get into the video all right, so I'm back in the studio. It is currently October 6th, and please ignore my messy background of my studio. It is, uh, my studio is always a mess, but I'll be in here working. We ain't playing no games. We ain't here working, okay? So today I'm gonna be starting on this shoulder bag, and this is a bag design that I created not too long ago. And I made this bag before. I'm doing it in a different color though. So I originally made this bag design and called it Skunker Punker. It was a bag inspired by my dog getting sprayed by a skunk. I thought it would be really cool if I did like a skunk colored bag and kind of skunk stripe and stuff like that. And I almost didn't want to do this bag because I didn't want to tamper with that design because I felt like it would kind of ruin the original essence of what I designed this bag to be. But I was like, you know what? I already did what I needed to do with that bag. I couldn't get these colors out of my head and really it i feel like it only not that it would only look dope in this design but it just looks so good these colors so i'm gonna go ahead and show you the um sketch that i'm going well the sketch that i did for this bag design so again this is what we got originally it was for skunker punker i don't know what i'm gonna call this one but this one almost reminds me of like water or like just i don't know how to explain it it, it reminds me of like water being at peace kind of waves or like something like of that nature and there's so many different blues in this bag that i'm going to be using so super dope i have all of my pieces already cut out and ready to go you already know how i do so this is the gusset piece all of the denim is cut out for this bag i'm using denim and i'm also using waterproof canvas i'm using a waterproof canvas for all my overlay pieces it's like this really nice teal blue color which looks so dope against this light blue denim and recently i've really been into like color and like just playing around with different textiles i never until not too long ago used waterproof canvas on the outside of a bag because honestly i didn't know that you could do it and i just randomly was like you know what let me try it and i did it and it worked really well and i've been playing around with color now using the waterproof canvas and i feel like it's just kind of my entry into kind of using other textiles and different things like that to you know achieve a certain look or just have fun colors to play with so really cool expanding my horizon a little bit but the first thing that i'm gonna go ahead and do for this bag is if you know me you know i love a good template i say it in all of my videos let me grab it because i don't have it on my table right now so again this is already bag that i made so all of my pattern pieces were already made up but i did templates that i'm going to lay on top of my fabric i have the holes poked so I'm just gonna take a little um, fabric marker, dot where all the holes are, remove it, and that's gonna be my templates. And that's what I'm gonna use to line up all of the pattern pieces to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And one of my favorite things about working with the pattern that I already made for a bag is that it feels like I'm cheating because every time I go to make a bag, I'm typically starting from scratch, design, pattern making, pattern testing, all that stuff. But when I've already made a bag with a pattern, it's like I can just jump straight into it. No testing, no designing, no like, pulling my hair out I can just jump straight into work like it feels like I'm cheating so 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the applique. I'm, I'm gonna use my domestic sewing machine to do all of the applique. I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch really tightly and it's gonna give it this really nice embroidered look. I love the design of it. And recently I learned that I can actually already have my pieces interfaced and then do the applique because before I was doing the applique and then interfacing my pieces, but it would make my pieces shrink because the fabric wasn't stiff, so it would kind of shrink. But when I applique and then do the applique, it doesn't shrink it because it's kind of already stiff. It doesn't, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm gonna go ahead and start that. I'm gonna stop rambling and yeah, let's do that. All right, so it's the next day and I went ahead and finished up all of the applique pieces and I only had to do the front and the back, the flap and then the bottom gusset. And as you can see, it came out amazing. The stitching on this looks absolutely beautiful and I really love this thread color that I'm using for this bag. I didn't go over the thread colors that I'm using, but I'm using this green turquoise color. It looks freaking amazing and I know that it's gonna look really good on the stitching as well. And I like that all the shades of blue on this bag are completely different or tur is turquoise a blue? It's like a shade of blue, right? I'm gonna say that it is, but I love how all of the shades of blue are different on this bag and it just really looks amazing. So this is the back piece, this is the flap right here, and then this is the front piece. I also went ahead again and did the gusset. Now for the gusset, like how I did on the Skunker Punker, I cut the applique piece in the center because this is where the bottom support is gonna go. So it's gonna kinda cover like this, um, that part. And the reason why I cut it is so that it doesn't because the applique kind of makes it really thick, like the stitches are kind of thick, so it's gonna make the bottom support wonky if I did it all the way across. So I cut it to stop it, and then the bottom support is gonna cover the raw ends of it, just to kind of make everything lie nice and flat. It's not gonna be wonky or anything like that. So now what I need to go ahead and do is I have the piping already made up, so I'm gonna attach the piping to the front and the back, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and sew on my name tag, which this is the name tag right here. I used a green turquoise as well for the embroidery on this, just to kind of tie everything Everything all together and it's looking really cool honestly this reminds me of like a river like it's, it's giving me river vibes like born by the river type of situation you want know the vibes you know the vibes so I'm gonna sew on the piping attach my name tag and then I'll probably sew up the flap too and then I'll check back in and let you know what's up so let's go ahead and do that All right, so I went ahead and I also added my snaps in off camera. So I did the snaps first and then I went ahead and did the piping around here. So this is the front and then I did the back. I sewed up the flap and attached it. And I also went ahead and added the eyelets on beforehand because last time when I made this bag, I waited too late to put the eyelets on for where the straps are gonna kind of be threaded through the flap. And it made it really difficult doing it towards the end because everything was already sewn together. The gusset was on, I didn't have enough space to really poke the holes and do all the work that I needed to. So I did it before everything was all 3D, it's all in the 2D form. I added the rivets on here and I also put the piping on the back and it looks so freaking dope. It was a little part on here. I wanna say right here, it doesn't line up perfectly. I got, I got it as best as I could, but I don't really care that it's not too perfect as long as it looks good enough, okay? <laughs> Okay, this is what they're looking like so far. So now what I need to go ahead and do is, again, I have the bottom support that I'm gonna sew on the bottom and it's gonna cover up the raw edges of this. And I'm also gonna do five purse feet on here, all silver hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead, sew the bottom support on, sew the gusset, 
and then the exterior will essentially be pretty much done after that it's been a really smooth so it was a few things that i had to steam up and redo a few times but it's been pretty smooth it's been pretty smooth um i have been a little stressed out during this project because i'm going broker and broker by the day but we gonna we gonna get through this we gonna get through it i've been so stressed lately due like financial reasons like sales are slow pattern sales are slow it's just hard the economy is just bad right now it's just bad but i'm gonna try to stay calm keep going keep calm and collective and keep going because we gotta keep going we gotta keep going but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead sew this gusset and then um i'll check back in and let you know what i'm gonna do next i think they're probably gonna stop here for the night though because i've been working quite a lot today so probably gonna stop there tonight and then i'll check back in tomorrow would we'll let you know what i'm gonna do next so i'm gonna go ahead and do this gusset and yeah All right, so it's the next day and yesterday I went ahead and finished up putting on the purse feet to the gusset. I also went ahead and sewed the gusset to the front and the back piece. And this is what it's looking like so far. It's inside out right now, but it looks amazing. I love this design so much. And this is one of those ones where I low key might have to do it in more colors, even though I originally didn't want to, but I'm really loving how it's coming out. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna start on the lining. And this is the color that I'm going with for the inside. It's like this really nice minty aqua blue color. I love it. It reminds me, every time I use this color um, for a bag, it reminds me of like Tiffany, like the Tiffany blue color. So it's this really nice blue. And all of the shades, again, are different. The blues on this bag are different from the others. So this is the zipper that I'm going to go with for the color as well. And I wanted to do a teal zipper, but I didn't have any teal. So I just had to settle on this like navy blue but honestly i don't think it'll look bad against this right here like it doesn't honestly look that bad so i'm gonna go ahead and use this color for the zipper pocket i'm gonna do a zip pocket slit pocket my interior logos all that good stuff I already have all of my name plates and everything embroidered out if you do want to learn how to make your own name plates i do have a tutorial on how i make all of them make sure you check that out i have it linked down below or on the screen somewhere and for the thread color on this one i'm gonna use like this teal the green teal for the um top stitching on the inside of the bags, I think it'll look really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, start on the lining, and yeah, I'll check back in and let you know what's gonna be after that. But so far, it's looking great. So let's go ahead and get into the lining. All right, so I just went ahead and finished sewing up the lining and it looks really good. I left a hole in the bottom of here so that I can use this to turn everything right side out through. But so far we have the zipper pocket right here. When you open it up, it has a tag that says made by Rovell Gaither. I put that on the inside of all my zipper pockets. And then I did do a slip pocket on the other side. So we have the slip pocket right here. You can fit some things right there. And I went ahead and added rivets I don't know if you can see, I put a rivet here and a rivet here. Um, those are the stress areas. That's where you, you want to add rivets or there's something to kind of protect the area because it's a stress area. So stress areas are considered parts of a bag where it's going to get a lot of pull, wear and tear and stuff like that. So I added the rivets so that over time the stitches do not wear and tear. So looking really nice, looking cool. I love this color too. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I need to attach the lining to the actual exterior. So that shouldn't be anything too crazy. I did already go ahead also and base the side seams open just to make everything easier. So I'm gonna go ahead, do that. I'm gonna have to turn the, right, the bag right side out, top stitch it, and then I have to do the straps and I'll be pretty much done. Simple. Honestly, it's been a pretty simple project and it looks so good. I'm just so happy with how this is turning out. And I love the size of this bag. I don't know if I ever said that in my original video, but I love the size of this. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's like the perfect size. And I have been doing a double stitch on all of the top stitching. I have not been 
I didn't make that clear um, in the beginning, but I have been doing a um, double stitch just to give it a nice thicker stitch look and have the color pop a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead, sew the lining to the exterior, do all the stuff I need to do, check back in, and let you know what we're gonna do next. So let's do that. All right, so it's the next day and it is going to be the last day that I'm going to be working on this bag. But so far I have the bag turned right side out and it looks freaking amazing. Like I love the look of this design so much. And these colors together are thebomb.com. Like another thing that I love about this too is the texture, the different textures from the waterproof canvas to the denim, like it just, like the sheen, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but like the sheen of the waterproof canvas on like the teal, it just looks so good and it really adds to like that water rivery type of vibe. So I'm loving this whole situation. Look at the bottom and I did go ahead and give this bag a press as well and I did stuff it a little bit to kind of help with the shape, but the inside also looks amazing. I'm loving this blue with the other shades and at first i was a little nervous about using this blue color i was kind of debating it because i was like i don't know if it's gonna look good it's a lot of blues a lot of stuff going on but it actually looks really good on the inside of there so now what i need to go ahead and do is the last step which is to do the straps so i have the strips cut out for the strap already now these straps are really thin nothing too crazy on this one but i do have these shoulder pads that i have to sew onto the straps as well which kind of give it a little bit more depth and makes it more comfortable on the shoulder to wear so i'm gonna go ahead sew these up attach these on which i'm just attaching it by threading it through and then riveting it on the end um that's just what i find the easiest way when i have to do my straps this way so i'm gonna go ahead sew this up and then yeah we'll be done i really love this project so far it's been really smooth nothing too crazy i mean i made this bag before so it's not like i'm doing anything you know that i haven't done it's kind of it's easy it's, that's the thing about making bags that i've already made it's like it's it's like a kind of like muscle memory like i know what i'm doing already a little bit but it looks freaking amazing i did still don't know what i want to call this one i'm probably gonna go with like a water theme or like river like something a Along those lines, I might tie it into something going on in my life right now. I don't know how I'm feeling about that yet, so we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead, do the straps, and then I'll be done. So let's do that. All right, so today literally makes one week since I last finished this bag and I love this bag from the get go. I had no issues with this design, the color, the anything. I am obsessed with this bag and the more that I sit with it, the more I'm just in awe and just my work and the talent and just the skill of this bag is so good. And every time I make a bag, that's just really good. It reminds me to the first ever bag that I ever made and just how I came from that to where I am now and it's literally insane. So um, I do have a name and stuff for this bag and the meaning behind it is so beautiful and it's really personal to kind of my, where I'm at in life. A lot of my work recently has been like a tableau of literally where I'm at in life. And it's so crazy because they definitely say that art imitates life or is it life imitates art? Either way, art kind of imitates life. And it's so crazy because that's literally been everything. Like I will make something and just I'm so drawn to a design and I'm like I want to make this I don't know why I can't put a finger on why I'm drawn to it like with this bag and then I make it and I'm like this reminds me of this or this is giving me this and then somehow some way either the, during the middle of the production process or towards the end 
it, something comes out and I'm like, this is what this is. And it literally will be a direct reflection of what's going on in my life. Something that I watched, something that I said, something that I feel, something that I read. Like, it is crazy. So, I'm going to be calling this bag um, River of Prayers, River of Prayers. And it kind of just symbolizes, you know, a lot of the prayers that I feel like I've been saying recently for just something, a miracle, this to work out and just to see the light at the end of the tunnel because I don't, I, I, I talk about it kind of shortly in my videos, but nothing, I don't really go in depth, but it's been really hard lately. Like just staying motivated, staying positive, just getting up and coming in here to create time and time again and just feel like I have to hit the nail on the head and just create really unique pieces and just the finances and everything that goes into it, it's just been really hard and I feel like, well not feel, when I do this stuff and I put it out, it's not bringing in a return that's kind of helping me to keep pushing forward. So a lot of it's just been really hard and I've been a lot of really unmotivated, but I, regardless of how I feel, I still push through, I still keep going and it's just this river of prayers because again, this bag, it reminds me of a river um, it looks like streams of water from the river and stuff. And I did just finish reading this book called The Song of Achilles. It's like Greek, Greek folklore. And it doesn't help that I read that. Well, it does help, but um, I was kind of saying, you know, in my own fantasy world, whatever, um, the river of prayers, it would be called River Fulla. And people would go to this river and they would pray to the waters and the waters and the flows and the currents of the water would carry their prayers to the earth and the universe would pluck it out of the water and grant their prayers or whatever. And it's really just a beautiful meaning. It, it is very Greek folklore and it's crazy because around the time I was making this bag, I was reading that book. I finished it literally the day the day um, that I finished this bag, I finished that book. And it's just kind of crazy how it all tied in together. Sorry I'm ranting, but I just wanted to explain kind of like this bag and the meaning behind it. And it's so dope i love it and it really does remind me of river so i'm gonna go ahead and do some final shots and kind of talk about the bag a little bit so right off the bat i love these color combos so much they look so good and i knew from the get-go that these colors were gonna look amazing because i accidentally set them next to each other and i was like this will make a good bag and then this design popped in my head and i really love the applique stitching on this probably some of the best applique that i've done so far i really feel like i'm kind of getting it down packed and learning the techniques and stuff and how to do it so it came out really dope and i just love it it's really good quality i really love the pattern alignment again i didn't make this bag before and a pattern the pattern alignment on the first one was also beautiful beautiful amazing it's the same exact pattern um and everything just looks really good all silver hardware on this bag and i do love the purse feet on the bottom i did decide to go with five i think that it just fits it beautifully and it kind of balances everything out and i love this bag i'm not going to be able to show the inside i already know because i already I always have a hard time showing the insides of bags trying to get good shots but this is what the inside looks like i already showed it in a little bit in the video but also amazing i love this shade of blue we have the zipper pocket my name tag and then we also have the slip pocket on this side. And this is a really good size bag. Like, it's not too small. It's not too big. It's like literally the perfect size for everyday use. Like, this is what it looks like on. So amazing. And I did make the strap drop really um, comfortable. It's, it's a long enough strap drop to where it's comfortable. It's not riding right up in your armpits, but it's also not too low to where it feels like it's just really heavy. Like, it's a really good strap drop on this bag. And it just looks amazing. So again, I'm calling this bag River Full of Prayers and it is going to be retailing for $825 on my website with the shipping and dust bag included in the cost. You don't have to pay anything extra for those ones. And it is pricey, but I mean, come on now, the work speaks for itself. I mean, what can I say? What can I say? She is gorgeous. She's beautiful. And honestly, I really don't even have to rate this project. I feel like I already did that in my last one. This project was a lot easier. It's always easier when I remake a bag because it's like I know what I'm doing. I know where I messed up on the last one. So I kind of know what to look out for when I'm remaking one. So this one was a really smooth project. Nothing too crazy. I would rate the difficulty of this for me at my skill level. I would rate it like a five and a half out of ten. Now, if someone was to be like a beginner and they're just starting out, I would probably rate it maybe like a eight seven and a half eight um or maybe like even eight and a half nine because there is a lot of little details like pattern alignment and then just applique like it can be pretty difficult but it came out beautiful and i really do love this bag 
So yeah, I thank you guys so much for watching. If you stuck around all the way to the end, please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when I upload any new videos or just anything that I may post in the future. And make sure you guys also follow all of my social media links. I'll have that down below in the description box as well. My website will also be linked down there where you can check out this bag or any other pieces that I have up and available, any patterns that I have up. And yeah, I thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I love this bag. It's really been therapeutic. A lot of my work lately has been, um, again, because I'm not really good at expressing. I talked about this, I think, in my last video. I'm not really good at expressing myself and like verbally communicating how I feel or thoughts to others. So a lot of my work, I feel like I've been doing that through my work. And I feel like that's what art is for, for a lot of artists. A lot of artists don't know how to communicate to people well, so they do it through their work. And I feel like that's what I've been doing. So. I really love it. I love how it came out. And I thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Mad Bagger signing out.